We're Sid and Mackie. For the past six years, we've been racing mountain bikes professionally and living out of our van. Normally, at this time of year, we'd be planning our upcoming race season and heading somewhere warm and dry to train. But with COVID delaying and canceling events and a frustrating injury that has been plaguing Sid, things are looking a little bit different. We're currently in Boulder, so Sid can work with our PT three times a week, and I've been doing a lot of intervals. Unfortunately, due to a recent yoga ball accident, I found myself off the bike for a bit. I thought about just sitting around and moping, My leg hurts. but instead decided to see if I can get faster without riding. What's wrong with Mackie? He's lying on the floor. I'm fine, don't mind me. <laughs> um, well, I might have been doing yoga ball jumps today. Like is... you were jumping onto the yoga ball. Yeah, balance yeah. exercise. Mm -hmm. And? I was doing really well, I would like you to know. I was like l jumping on and landing and holding it, which was awesome. And then something went terribly wrong. <laughs> And I found myself flying in the air and the yoga ball rolled out from underneath me and I missed the crash patch that I had put. And you landed on your ass. And I landed really hard on, yeah. Well, it's weird because I landed on my, like, side of my butt, but where it hurts is like my hip flexor right here. In general, if I'm just like sitting there, I don't really notice it and it's fine like this. I'm okay. But if I try to move it, very painful. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> well, stiff after your nap. Just go in the bathroom. <laughs> Day two, post yoga ball incident. How are we doing? <laughs> Moving better than, slow. Better than day one. It definitely still twinges. Yeah. On certain but you're moving. That's yes. a big improvement from <laughs> yesterday. Significant improvement. I wouldn't say it's comfortable. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, don't mess I'm, with I it. I was just not trying to. That was just a move. step that landed weirdly. Okay. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> you never quite know when it's gonna strike. <laughs> Well, it has become painfully, pun intended, clear over the last couple of days that I will not be riding for a little while. I may be able to like go out and spin. I think Mike has put that on my schedule, but I won't be doing any hard rides. I won't be doing any intervals, and I definitely will not be riding any mountain bikes. That's pretty disappointing, obviously. I was thinking like, I guess I'll just use the time to like catch up on editing and maybe mope around a little bit. My leg hurts. But then I realized that instead of just moping, I could try an experiment. So I am going to try visualization. I'm gonna take one of the runs that Lee and I did. It's called David Lee Roth. I think the fastest time on it is a little under nine minutes, like 8.40 or something. When Lee and I rode it, it took us 11 minutes. Of that 45 seconds, we're stopping. So that's what, 10.15. And then we went really easy on the climb, so let's take off another 45 seconds or something. So that would be, what, nine and a half minutes? Yeah, so it was probably like a nine and a half minute run. Lee knows the trail really well. He actually has one of the fastest times on it. I think it's fourth fastest. He showed me all the good lines. I was recording. I'm gonna take that footage and I'm gonna watch it every day, three times. It's Sunday. I'm gonna try next Sunday, which would be 10 days, nine days after I yoga ball crashed and see if in these seven days of three times a day, so that's 21 times, what that does. Like if I feel like I can get to know the course and then I can go back out there and ride it again and see how much faster I can go. So I am just about three days out from the incident. And as you can see, I'm moving a lot faster. I'm still limping, but it's a significantly less pronounced limp. So that's a good sign. I'm fairly sure it's muscular, also a good sign. But uh, I'm certainly not back to riding my bike. <laughs> okay, I'm in.
Hey, John. I think it might be a little better. Good. I may not be able to ride yet, but one thing I can do is get Sid's bike set up for me. There are a lot of adjustments on this fork. This is the grip too, so there's high speed the blue, low speed the black, and then there's high and low speed rebound as well. Because Sid didn't really get a chance to ride this bike this year because of her injury, we haven't ever really set up the suspension in terms of the compression, rebound, etc. settings. Fortunately, Fox has a recommended starting point for that, so I'm just gonna set it to the recommended starting point. Then when I go out to left hand, I'll do a couple of laps on a lower trail and just see if I can dial things in and get it feeling really good. Speaking of suspension, it's amazing how much of a difference nice suspension makes on a bicycle. So if you were one of those people who was not able to get a new bike last year because there aren't any new bikes available at the moment, but you're looking for a way to like make your bike feel better, suspension is one of the biggest things you can do in my opinion. Like fresh suspension just feels amazing and it turns out that this fork the fox 36 float grip 2 is available on competitive cyclist who is sponsoring this video huge thank you to them for helping us make this channel possible definitely go check out the fork on competitive cyclist it's an amazing fork we absolutely love it lots of good adjustment and just makes your bike feel amazing. So head over to Competitive Cyclist. We all have a link in the description and use the code SIDMACKIE15. That is SIDMACKIE15, all caps, for 15% off your first order. Some exclusions apply. I can feel my body fold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Looks can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can't take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can't take. All right. That was my 19th time watching this, watching it at high speed, and then visualizing the run. I'll admit, after 19 times, it's a little boring. So what I've found is I am sort of looking for other things. I'm trying to see things that I missed before, like add cues, because everything for me is like, oh, after this, there's like an S turn, and it goes this way. And so trying to like find new of those ones so that at any point in the trail, I could just like appear there and I would know what was coming up and how I needed to set up for it, etc. That's how I've been like trying to keep my focus while I'm watching this video for the 19th time. I have two more times, midday today, this evening, and then hopefully tomorrow I have a good, clean, faster run. recipe trump me here. <laughs> I'm over here doing my thing and Mackie's like, but the recipe says this. <laughs> do I look like I care what the recipe says? <laughs> we don't actually usually cook together in case you can't tell. No, we have our assigned meals. <laughs> I make breakfast, Sid makes dinner. But today Mackie's all like, oh, I'm gonna film and tell you how to cook. I'm just here for moral support. <laughs> So I feel like when Mac you met my family, one of the things that you thought was the weirdest is that we always eat our chili over spaghetti. I just didn't eat chili very often, but I don't think I ever had it over spaghetti before. It's definitely, I think, an Ohio thing. There's a restaurant based out of Cincinnati called Skyline Chili, which serves pretty cheap, generic meat chili over spaghetti noodles. So what you're saying is that Skyline Chili is essentially Frito Pies. It's like a Frito spaghetti. Pie, yeah. We often make chili with barbecue sauce. It's 
quite delicious. It works very well. We don't have any, so I'm gonna kind of like make my own. A mix of tomato paste, maple syrup, and hot sauce. That is really good. Good okay, job. It tastes like barbecue Ooh, sauce. Yeah, good but job. But like good barbecue sauce. It's spicy too, I like it. Okay, so I know someone's gonna come at me in the comments and be like, what's the recipe? There is no recipe. I forced Mackie to stop looking at the recipe because it was garbage. Um, no, you just hate recipes. <laughs> I don't typically cook with a recipe at all. I, I am actually incapable of cooking with a recipe. <laughs> However, we do get a lot of questions about recipes and I've been writing out some of these meals and sharing that on Patreon if you are interested in that. just finished watching it for the last time. That was my 21st time watching it, which is a lot of times. Are you like, I hate this trail? No. It was kind of cool, because I was like, wow, I feel like I really do know this trail well. Especially when I think back to like, my reaction when I was watching it like the first couple times, there were sections that I recognized. I was like, okay, I know where this section is. I know where this section is now. I know the sections and I know how they all connect. So. I'm optimistic that that will help me ride it more quickly, but I guess we'll find out. All right, I'm off. I'm pretty excited, a little bit nervous because I don't really know how this is gonna go. I don't know what sort of difference visualization will make, but I'm pretty excited to find out. So heading out to Left Hand Canyon to go finally ride this trail again after uh, visually riding it or mentally riding it 21 times. I'm feeling pretty stupid right now. I am one minute away from Left Hand Canyon and realized that I forgot my shoes. So, I have to turn around. I would say overall, my leg feels quite good considering how it felt, what is it, nine days ago. For the most part, I don't notice it. There are still some movements that it doesn't like. Walking is still maybe not 100%. Pedaling is okay, except occasionally if I'm like pushing hard. I don't think it'll be an issue for today's ride, but it definitely isn't 100%. I definitely have some more work to get it back to where it should be. I'm trying to decide if I want to take one of these side trails, if I can find one that like connects back in here, because then I could do some short laps or at least a little bit of descending to see how the suspension feels. And if there are any adjustments I want to make before going up to the top. Well, there's definitely a trail going off here. Question is where? Does it go? Well, I think I'll try it. <laughs> if it looks like it's not going the right way, I'll just stop and hike back up. So turns out that like a dummy, I had my rear shock on firm, not open. So I'm gonna try running just this top part, which is kind of rocky one more time.
All right, I'm thinking rebound is maybe a little fast. Okay, I did two clicks on each high and low speed rebound on the back and one click on the front. So I'll hike back up and try it again. All right, third time's the charm. Well, it definitely didn't feel too slow. So I'm gonna say that's good. Um, time to go up to the tippy top and uh, see if the visualization paid off. Ah, this climb is called The Grind. That seems appropriate, given my memory of doing it previously. All right, to the top. I have to say, after doing that climb, it took me about 54 minutes. I'm guessing maybe 10 of those were the dialing in the suspension. So let's say 45 minutes to get up here. That's a lot of work. Getting up here 21 times would be a ton of work. So if visualizing is effective, it's a lot more efficient than a 45 minute climb, eight to 10 minute descent 21 times probably not as effective as riding it 21 times, but like it's all a payoff. So if this works, definitely gonna be using it again in the future. The trail starts a little ways down here, but there's a nice view here. So I'm gonna take advantage of it and do one last visualization. Not gonna watch, just gonna like think it through and then uh, cruise down there and give it a shot. I guess it's time. I can delay no longer. All right, here's where it starts. Whew. All right, I know this trail. So far, so good. Things are looking pretty familiar. Okay, right up here is where my video ended because I paused it. So I don't actually know what this part looks like, but I think it's just climbing. I was wrong. It was not just climbing. Okay, here we go. We're back. Across. Down the thing. Left. Oh yeah, 
I remember. Come on, Mackie. I would say that that went extremely well. I don't know what my time was exactly because I still need to upload my GPS, but it was definitely faster than the first time we did it. It was definitely faster than it would have been had I not done that. I can just tell I like knew what was coming, where I need to slow down, where I need where I could like let go. The thing that surprised me was how much the GoPro effect was in effect, I guess. Watching the runs, everything looked pretty flat, like not nearly as steep as it was. And I kept being like, man, why aren't we going faster? Like we should be going faster. It's because it turns out it was quite a bit steeper than it looks in the camera. Also, things sort of snuck up on me a little faster. Oh. <laughs> Did not hit that corner properly. And I think part of that was I was just going faster, so that's great. But it makes me think if I'm gonna do visualization in the future, when I'm watching the video, run it at like 110 or 120% speed. So it's a little faster. So those are my main takeaways is GoPro effect is a real thing, <laughs> even when it's your own footage. And I should have run it at like slightly higher speed just to be processing things a little bit faster. You got it! I got the KLM <laughs> Yay. by two seconds. Oh, it was close! <laughs> it was close. That's but good, that like, gives leave room, wiggle room there to come take it back again. Yeah. It's not like you decimated it by like a minute. I was wrong. You didn't get it. I decimated it by a minute. You got it by a minute? <laughs> <laughs> I got it by a minute and two seconds. Send a screenshot to Lee. Yeah, I got a 738. The previous KOM was an 840. Wow. Wow, that's that worked. That really worked. That's some convincing evidence for <laughs> visualizing a minute off the previous send KOM. A, send me a screenshot. I want to see what he says. My conclusion is that visualization works really well. So I will be visualizing because it seems stupid not to. And uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. And in the meantime, don't forget to be more awesome. Okay, Lee just texted me. He says, "Oh hell yes, great job, man." <laughs> okay, Lee now apparently <laughs> didn't look at the picture carefully enough. He says, holy sh at first I thought you made two seconds, but it's a minute too. <laughs> That's exactly what you said.